110 go extra. Yeah. Don't let none stress y'all. No. Running, running through the mission. Huh? Make your hate a pay rendition. Honey, time. So I know. So go, go. Him. Michael Phelps, do the stroke, do the quick sand. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Pierre from HTP. This is Elvis, checking in. All right, uh, took advantage of the beautiful weather today, so we will be in the outdoors. So if you hear any outside noise, that's regularly not something that we would have. But other than that, just enjoying the beautiful day. Now we appreciate y'all tuning in because it was too hot in there. Uh, but yeah, we're just out here enjoying the weather. It's New York City, you know. We live in apartments, apartments, and we don't have the luxury of going to like, you know, yeah. going out to our backyard. So we out here making the most of it. All right. So um, today's topic, very important. Today's topic is the journey, the, the journey. journey of how we became uh, baseball players or how we became college baseball players. Better said. Yeah. So because um, we all wanted to be baseball players growing up, but um, actually getting into college and getting and being part of the baseball team, which is our main goal, which I'm sure is the main goal for a lot of our viewers and a lot of people who are interested in knowing, yeah, I play baseball, but how do I get into college and what are the process and what did you do for going through it? Exactly, so, exactly. From your examples, I was, I mean, yeah, so go for it. The last episode, we focused more on, you know, how to stay focused while being from the from the community, being a, from a rough community. Uh, this ex episode, we really want to focus on the journey. So for myself, to be honest with y'all, I, um, it was more of, really surrounding myself with the right people like Pierre um, where we can kind of put ourselves in a safe space while we was in school and we did a lot of studying a lot of study halls as well and that's what people didn't know we're known for those guys going 110 percent on the field uh, giving it our all but we always found time to making sure that the student side of our athlete because you're named student athlete for a reason there's a there's the reason why this, you're a student first and that's become that's because not everyone has the luxury of making it to play professional baseball. So for us, for me at least, it was a lot of practice, making sure that I got the the tutoring in, in any area in high school that I needed. My big thing was math. <laughs> Pierre knows I I was yeah. terrible at math, <laughs> but I reached out for help. I'm not I, lie, I was bad too, so I, I, can't, I can't fault him. <laughs> exactly. Uh, um, but that was my thing, to be honest. Yeah, you remember Pierre? Yeah, I, of course. I mean, just to piggyback off what you said, I mean, just our experience of what we went through is, is a lot of people can relate to that in that aspect that we formed the nucleus of like people that we knew that wanted the same goal as us. Exactly. And we surrounded ourselves with those individuals, and that's the reason that we had the outcome that we had. Yeah. Now. That there's a lot of things that maybe we, could, we would have done differently knowing something differently Absolutely. is the reason why we're doing this podcast and why we're actually trying to do content or doing content better said is because we want to everything that we went through that it was positive we want you guys to get that but also there's a lot of things in the journey that we weren't taught and luckily you don't have to go through that experience of having to go through it rather than learning from others which in my opinion is a lot wiser and smarter yeah. um so for my journey, just like he said, basically anything that sums up to be a baseball player is a lot of you guys that are, um, if you haven't played or you're dedicating yourself to become a professional athlete or, or just become a professional athlete in any sport, uh, you know there's a certain type of dedication that you have to take towards your school and also your athletic part. School because obviously, like I was thinking back earlier, you're a student first and an athlete, so if you don't get yourself prepared um, with the books, unfortunately, maybe I'm saying unfortunately because our system works in separate ways, which we won't get to the topic right now because it's too broad, but um, sometimes, if you don't, well, not sometimes. If you don't get your educational part, you will never excel on the other side of the of the, of the ball field. So if you don't go to school, you don't go to class. You don't take care of your schoolwork. You're never gonna go to class. You're never gonna. You're never gonna get on the field. I'm sorry. So uh, from experience, it's happened to me. Uh, I was one of those guys that I went to school. I would always get good grades, and there was this one semester that I messed up. And I literally got the privilege because it's a privilege to be on a baseball team. I got the privilege of being in the baseball team, nationally ranked, I was a starter, and I got kicked off the team because I didn't attend to a few classes. So that's that's just from my perspective how important it is to actually take care of your school. Mind you, I graduated honors, everything is good. Just one class, my senior year, I had three classes because they were, I already had too much credentials to be in school. And they were like, we need to give you a few classes. And just for me making that one mistake, it, it didn't allow me to 
excel in the other part of my chapter of my career in baseball, you know? So that's why it's so important to stay focused and do your thing in school. Absolutely, that's, that's key, it's key. Yeah. Um, I love the fact that we're talking about the education part of it because a lot of yeah. athletes, and even for me, sometimes I would get distracted on the outside. Uh, but luckily, you know, we blocked out that outside noise and, you know, that trouble I had in math, for example, I, I got that help, I seeked out the help, I graduated high school, I had the opportunity to get recruited by a Division One school down south, um, I had a scholarship to New Mexico Military Institute, so I turned something into nothing, I worked hard, um, I never had the best grades in the world, but just know that just because you don't have the greatest grades in the world, don't be discouraged, you know, keep going, keep going, you know, at the end of the day what matters is being at the top of that mountain, so for me, I went to New Mexico, we're, I played there two years. It was a great experience for me. I was able to play against That's future tough. MLB players, yeah, um, Nick Pavetta, who plays for the for the for the Washington Nationals. Uh, you know, a lot of great athletes and the experience that I had is something that I would never trade for anything else and that's because I was able to handle the school part of it and it gave me that opportunity and it opened so many doors so just don't focus on the sport side of it um, focus on the education because a lot more opportunities will open up um, and yeah that was really my journey um, I you know we formed 110% out of, um, out, of, out of basically sorry to tell you about basically out of um, the necessity that we saw of what we were going through. Um, we weren't necessarily the most gifted athletes, but I'll tell you this much, we were we definitely were the hardest working ones, if not one of the hardest workers out of, the, out of an entire group that we were ever at. So we we know we we knew that we, we were blue collar guys. We'll get there, we'll get a job done, but the school aspect is so important that kids don't even understand how because you will see athletes like Zion Williamson, you will see once in a generation athletes that you you might think like oh but those kids they're they're also going home in, in the books don't think that they're like getting slacked off because they're who they are they, they still have to pass their classes to be able to play so you know what i mean just keep that into perspective me coming from new york city and how we had in the last segment you know how the distractions are over here um a lot different than when you live up in the suburbs or a rural area where you know you might just have a few friends and everybody chills together in the same town everybody knows each other so it's a whole different perspective when you're in the concrete nobody's looking out for you everybody's going after their money you know after what they after they grind so nobody's going to stop to to stop to give you the keys of the success of whatever you want to be you have to find that out through your journey and everybody has a, has a different journey but we all ultimately go through the same path. So remember, there's people that have been there before you, and if you can learn from them, it's the smartest thing you can do. From my perspective, that's what I'm going through. Exactly. Um, a big thing for me also that worked in, in my high school days, for example, is if I didn't know anything and, if, and I, want, I wanted to like improve in a certain area, I would reach out for help. A lot of people are afraid of reaching out to help because based off of fear of what people might think. At the end of the day, if you seek out help, who, who, the person winning is you. You'll be winning because you won't have to depend on, you know, someone else's lame advice or excuse uh, because at the end of the day, they're probably upset that they didn't make it in life and now they want to bring that poison to you. So if you have a question in any area, it can be on the field or at school, reach out for help because I was able to have those mentors in my life, Pierre, same thing with Pierre. Uh, we had people like Yeoman Wilder, you know, we had people in the community who were key figures. So sometimes we got, you gotta find those people, but you know, there's a reason why you're able to make it to that next level. It's because we were able to get the advice about the importance of uh, making sure you fi figure out your financial aid. There's a lot of athletes who don't know the importance of financial aid, you know, not all schools. And a lot of these dream schools that we say, you know, I wanted to go to the Miami U, <laughs> Everybody wanted to be a Who didn't want to go to Miami U? Who didn't want to be in Kentucky Your uniforms or, are sick. or Georgia? Your uniforms no, are sick. I love Vanderbilt Miami. as well, Vanderbilt. On, but realistically Vandy. speaking, a lot of these schools, unless yeah. you don't have a scholarship, full you know, ride scholarship, yeah. you're not. You're, yeah, it's really tough. So it's important that you, you know, you do all these processes. There's a lot of uh, platforms in place and a lot of programs that can really help. Um, obviously, the more in a more picture perfect world, we all want to be a plus 
uh, students. For the, shout out to those who are A plus students. Absolutely. You know, keep keep going for it. Um, I worked my way up from being a C average student to ma being a B plus average student. So what I'm trying to get at here is reach out for help, making sure that you know that there's things like financial aid, there's different scholarship programs, there's mentorship programs you can reach out to. Because the moment we kind of feel like no one has our back, that's when we become vulnerable. And then you want you don't want to put yourself in a self predicament situation in life when it can be easily controllable. Absolutely. Like, the education is there. Education is key. I mean, yeah, that's absolutely, what it is. absolutely. And and just to like piggyback on what he was saying as well, you know, um, when, like you were saying, it's so important. Like, I, I, they never told me that I had to email a coach to see if he could come down, see my showcase. I would have to present myself. Like, I, I didn't know the process of me getting scouted or getting recruited. You know, in New York City, and whoever's watching this video that is from New York City could relate with this 100%. The, the amount of people that get drafted in New York City, is, I'm speaking about baseball, of course, um, is really low compared to other states. And it's not a coincidence. Why? It's because there's a plethora of, of talent over here, but it's just not being seeped out or we're not doing the correct job to get ourselves exposed out there. So something that I noticed that if I would have done differently would have made a huge difference in how I would have got recruited and who would have recruited me was Number one, you have to know what kind of ball player you are and what fits your niche and who you are, you understand? I always thought I was a homer hitter. I thought I was the biggest man. When y'all see me, I'm 5'8", I'm probably 5'7", 170 pounds. I'm not a homer hitter. I'm, I'm a base hit guy running down the line. You, you know how I was, always scrappy, yeah. running, great defense, you know? But I, I know I know where my limits were and I know where I was at. I don't want to say limit yourself, but I, I know more or less where I was at. But if I knew how to send that proper email, if I knew what financial aid was before, if I knew how important the SAT was. So I remember taking the PSAT in New York, and I'm relating to New York students personally right now. When we used to take the PSAA test, PSAT test, it was like, oh, I'm going to take this test. Dude. I'm trying to get out of school early, so we can go to Inwood and we can go throw. Right, that was basically my whole thing was if it was beautiful outside, then I want to be in school. I wanted to be outside in the field, throwing, hitting, doing everything I wanted to do. But I didn't know that there was. Well, I didn't know there was a time in which things were gonna stop and things were gonna get different, depending on the decisions I made prior. But if I would have known several things like how to send a proper email and how to tell coach to come see me or, or check check my credentials or whatever the case was. I, I probably would have been in a different position than what I would have been when I had to go through it. I noticed a little too late. Elvis had left to college. I had to stay here in the city. I went upstate to Canton. I was fortunate enough they took care of me over there. But I know I, I know what I wanted to do, and I know if I would have taken those steps and I would have had that advice, perhaps I would have been a little simple for them. Pretty much, plain and simple. I think you could agree to it too. Like we would have done it especially earlier. Sophomore year, freshman year, start going to these showcases, guys. You don't understand how important it is to get your name out there. Start going to these showcases. DM everybody you have to DM. You guys have Instagram now, Facebook. It's crazy. We didn't have any of that. We just had emails, basically. What I would do is I would stop whatever school I wanted to go to, see what email the head coach was, and I would email even the, the dean who I had to, just to get in touch with somebody to see what's going on you understand yeah. so that's how far i got to i was lucky enough to get a scholarship later on in my career to go down play in north carolina um but it was the grind it was just similar to how i was telling you i smartened up during the process that i started making the videos people and and then it became to a point that i had a list of of what schools i wanted to go to rather than having to go to whatever pick whatever school wanted me whatever school wanted me pretty much yeah. i had a i had a I, you understand i had a, i had decisions to make after that but i had to go through that adjustment which took me a year to which if i would have taken that year to to put in something else more valuable like showcases getting out there and travel just don't play to play baseball guys if you're going to play baseball and take it serious what are some notable showcase. showcases uh you think, perfect uh, game showcase I, I know you would agree yeah now, and look guys Back then, back then, when me and Elvis were growing up, that was the showcase that we 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 knew about it, and it's not that we never knew about it, but you would have to pay like five six hundred dollars. My mom was not paying five six hundred dollars for us to go to a showcase in Florida, plus all this other stuff that we got to do. But there is local places, and and you just got to knowledge, just get the knowledge out there. Honestly, I mean Elvis, I know there's been a whole bunch of things that we would have known. Big time, it would have been a difference. So I'm trying to make sure, trying to. You know, get that to you guys so you guys can you know yeah 
make um, a difference. Another thing that I, you know, I want to definitely bring to the table is the importance of keeping a clean social media image as well. A lot of college recruiters, a lot of people who are looking for talent, they're always looking at your profiles. Don't feel like anyone is superior. Don't feel like, you know, no one is going to go through your social media uh, platforms. But it's important to know that whatever you post out there is going to be out there. And there will be college recruiters who will be looking at it and it will hurt your chances of actually having that opportunity because it really portrays what you're putting out to the world. So, so yeah, just be careful with what you put out there on the on your social media platforms. It can really harm your chances of uh, actually obtaining a, a scholarship. It can really throw all of your hard work down the drain. So, if there's a couple things to get out of this, you know, segment, we're outside. Um, I know there's a lot of we're about to throw some, some barbecue uh, on too. Yes, that out there. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but what you can get, some, something tangible you can get from this episode. To be honest, I would say definitely reaching out for help uh for you can know a lot of these 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 uh these systems are out there these platforms are out there the uh these showcases that you should not miss make sure that you don't put anything crazy on the net uh what's something else we can learn from this um the importance of actually knowing the sat score what are the requirements to get to that dream school if you ever do have a school you have four or five schools you want to go to know what the requirements are for that school so you can realistically be able to apply to it and not just have a, a, a fantasy dream in your head about I'm going to Miami and you have a D average. No offense, you know, that's not going to cut it. So, you know, just be realistic sometimes, you know, have tangible goals and attack them, guys. Just attack them, literally, just attack them. So don't even hesitate and learn from others. That's, that's the other thing I want to get to, learn from others. You don't understand how important that is. We learn through experience a lot of times, and that sucks, and it's good. But if you learn from others, your life is going to be a lot smoother. Trust me. Trust me. So, everyone, thank you for tuning in for this uh, really, really loving important, the scenery. Yeah, yeah. Important scenery segment, here. too, because I feel like this is a questions, and those these are um, things that a lot of people have um, questions about. Like, how did you become a college athlete? What is the process of becoming a college athlete? um in the future we're gonna have uh, more we're gonna we're gonna start posting similar things if you guys have any questions um or want to know what showcases you should go to or what you should do or what you should contact or anything regarding baseball basketball any sport because it's pretty much goes down to the same thing how to fill out a financial aid form um any of those things you, you guys could hit us on dm or send us an email the link is in the bio and uh just thank you guys for tuning in I uh, hope you guys took any of the advice that me and Elvis went through. And I, I shared a personal experience, personally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, you do not want to be that kid that gets dropped out of the baseball team. You do not. For a class, guys. Yeah. Trust me. It's the last thing I went through it. I would not want you to go through it. Uh, by the way, it's been the biggest teacher in my life. I had never, ever missed class after that, by the way. Just <laughs> throwing that in there. Uh, uh, just to wrap things up, uh, thank you for tuning in, everyone. Make sure to subscribe. Uh, add your comments, share with, share this message with your friends. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Remember, 110%. And also, I want to give thanks to um, all the Day One supporters and all the fa our HTP family who holds us together and always uh, keeps us like-minded and positive. Um, all the girls, all the HTP family girls, all the guys behind the scenes that make things happen for us. Um, we appreciate you guys. And, um, you know, just stay tuned for the next segment. Yeah. Don't ever let weather that I can ask. Easy to fill your craft. Never that. Weather that.